Okay, I think it's working. If anyone's watching, first off, hi, and can you let me know if everything sounds alright? If the sound is all good and everything looks good. If there are any issues, let me know and I'll see if I can fix it. Right, I'm just going to make myself a drink and we should be good to go. So I'll be just a couple of minutes. so cold oh hey Paolo how are things uh, so I'm just waiting for my milk to heat up and we should be good oh, so sure more of that colour I do right let's just get everything ready because I know how disorganised and clumsy I am so let's have a look uh, everything. Um, where's the other colour? Whoops. Indigo, I don't want indigo. What's that colour? I don't know what colour that is. It's always a good start. this colour. That's ultramarine blue. Don't want that one either. Prussian blue. Oh, that colour could be Prussian blue. Or is it phthalo blue? It looks quite phthalo. Hmm. Do I not have anything of that sort? Did I not label it? I'm, sh I'm sure I would have labelled it. Could be Prussian blue. Um, mm -mm. Sorry, I'm not very organised, and I should be. Ultramarine <laughs> blue light. 
Do we believe? anything else it looks like Prussian blue we'll test it I'll put a little bit mix a little bit of water see if that's Prussian blue yeah it's not too bad I don't think um, I'm gonna put over here because I don't want to make a mess I don't think that is is that Prussian blue that might be Prussian blue you can see how totally organized I am <laughs> Drunk of water. I'm just gonna use a paintbrush and see if this is Prussian blue. Don't damp brush. I think that looks like. Yes, that is Prussian blue. Would you guys say this is Prussian blue? Definitely not phalo, but that looks Prussian to me. Put a bit more powder in. That to me screams Prussian blue. So I think. Yeah, I'm just gonna go finish making my drink. And then we'll. Yeah, I'm gonna go finish making my drink, and then we're gonna go ahead and. Yeah, so I'm just gonna finish making my drink because. OPS decide to cut out and then I'm gonna um, take the letters up and start properly. Whoops. But yeah, I would say that's Prussian blue. Personally, I'm gonna go with it's Prussian blue. It doesn't look fake to me. Definitely looks more Prussian. If not, we're just gonna create a new colour anyway. <laughs> move that. I need to go wash my hands, finish my tea. I'm very disorganised. <laughs> I guess that's normal. Yeah, when I first started, I think it was a bit too much water. I'm interested how that swatch is going to go because I've, that, that's just the powder, the pigment powder and water. So that'll probably rub off. Yeah, let's go wash my hands and sort things out. Tea is brewing. Right, we're good. Out. Oh. 
Oh, I'm trying to stop him by Paolo. Right, let's take the images there off. My tea is brewing so we can wait while that brews. And we'll get started doing some paint making. Because we have two colours to make today, so I should get on with it. <laughs> so first colour we're going to do is Golden Mica. So nice non-toxic. Whoops. Sorry, that was right by the microphone. Mm, that's not going to pour out very well. Let's do this in a really awkward way because we want to know how awkward I like to be. Yeah, I found pretty much it all. Okay, so that's a one. Put that in the bin because that's going to make a huge mess. Is it the same one? Gold sparks, yeah. I always use the same mica, it's a really good mica. I like this mica. So for those who want to know where it's from, it's from the Soapery in the UK. And they're really good. I really like their micas. I've used a couple of them before. And they're really high quality and they make really nice paints. And they're not too expensive. Is that going to be enough? Yeah, because we're going to use quite a lot of paint binder, I think. This stuff gets everywhere. I hate bags. It's like the worst thing you can ship pigments in, but they're better than the paper bags that um, Crema, not Crema, Cornelison's sometimes send their pigments in. They are really, really not nice. So let's go in with some paint binder. Micas tend to take bit more paint binder than most pigments because it's just their nature really they're kind of a strange they're not pigments really like it's not pigment so it behaves a bit weirdly Micas are also really easy to mix in with paint binder because they're so finely ground. So if anybody's looking for a really easy one to start off with making paint, um, mica powders might be a good way to go. I tend to find mica powders work a bit better when you mix them with other colours though. Just my experience. Gold is okay on its own and silver's not too bad. But some of them can be a little bit um, transparent and lack some punch, depending on the colour that you go for. See, this is really thick. Like this will need more binder to it. It shouldn't be quite that thick. Let's add a bit more and mix them in. Also, I believe that their mic is also um, skin safe because it's used for body products, so soap and things like that. So it doesn't matter if you touch it, you're not gonna get any problems with it. You might need a bit more powder. I don't think that's quite enough paint. Seal the bag because I know what a clutch I am. I've just seen the gold mic on the stream. It actually looks quite nice on the stream. It does actually look like gold. That's something I always worry about with um, some gold mica paints. 
how true they look because obviously you want them to look like gold. Okay, I think that's all nicely mixed. I think we can start with the paint muller in a second. Nice and shimmery. <laughs> I love playing with this one, like just sweeping it around the board. <laughs> right, I'm gonna go grab my drink before I forget it. Tea. That's the important thing. Nice tea latte. Oh, that's really nice. Where do I put it? <laughs> Pop it here. Right. Oh, hey, Bob's of Pain. How are things going? We're on a paint making one today. <laughs> and we're starting with colour that looks really nice on the stream. <laughs> Gold paint always looks really nice for some reason. Always nice and shimmery. I'm just gonna make sure my sleeves don't get caught in the paint. You know how clumsy I can be. <laughs> And this one really won't take much mulling. Like, mica powders are so fine that they will literally mould in like 20 minutes. There's not much to do with it, like, you can't really grind it any finer, finer because it's so fine and powdery and just nice. <laughs> so, this one's actually going to be mixed with two colours. I'm going to be doing some split pans, but well, they're not split, but it's going to be two colours mixed into one pan together. I've got red and I've got gold for one of them, and then I've got Prussian blue and gold. So they're going to be called Aztec blue and Aztec red. Aztec blue I've made before. I didn't think it would do as well as what it did, and it really did quite well. And it sold out very quickly. Everybody wanted it. <laughs> So I thought I'd remake the Aztec blue and add a new colour in of Aztec red. I would imagine at some point I'd end up doing an Aztec green as well. Don't know if orange and gold would go. Can't think of what other colour 
up oh maybe i can file it and has take a file it that could be quite nice uh, if i get a chance to sit down it's been a busy weekend i know the feeling yesterday we had quite a busy day speaking of which yesterday we went to two places where i actually made paint about so we went to bradford on avon which is a really nice little town and then we went, ended up going to Melksham to see the Christmas lights because they do really nice Christmas lights at Christmas. I posted a picture about it on my Instagram stories if anybody wants to have a look. Ooh, Teve Cyan. How are things? Oh no, so you lost a sock and boot in the snow. Have you got quite deep snow at the moment? What's going on with my stream? It says I've got like one viewer and there's like at least three of you. I think it's just a busy time of year at the moment. I think every weekend's going to be pretty busy. And I've got a very busy next couple of weeks. I've got paint going on sale next Friday, which I'm going to be announcing tomorrow properly on Instagram. I've got three pet free spot. Still three and a half pet three and a half socks to make for Christmas, because they are Christmas presents. So, <laughs> I also have not done all of my Christmas shopping yet, and I've still got Christmas wrapping to do. <laughs> oh, it was Ruka Sock and Bootsy. It was the first one with those, and he was not very happy about them. Oh no. <laughs> I suppose it's helpful for him, I guess, because if it's very cold, it might hurt his feet. I think it's the same in hot countries that you've got to wear like shoes in hot countries to stop burning their feet. Not bring the mood out. He's in palliative care and he's only eating chicken. I think that's for making paint to end this chicken. Oh no, I'm sorry to hear that. I hope he's um comfortable. I know pets with allergies or dietary requirements can be quite difficult. I think it was Otto that made her hamster scrambled egg, I think she used to do, when she struggled to eat like dry food. Um, we got our stocking stuff today. Pretty much the whole family to shop for. Oh no. I think I've still got to buy, finish off my other half. I've not finished buying all the presents. Um, I think I could probably do getting something else for my mum. My dad, I don't know what else to get for my dad. I've got him one thing. I think he just wants money. I think he's being boring. Um, and I think that might be it. I'm not too bad with the present thing. But I've really got to get it ordered in the next week if it's going to be online. I also might try and find some smelly sets for people. I know Body Shop do some pretty affordable smelly sets for under a tenner. He's as good as he can be and the best price he's done in such, such good spirits. That's good. How old is he?
I'm sure it's another chicken and rich broth. <laughs> yeah, it must be um in a way quite a treat for him. It's gotta be more exciting than a kibble. Wow, nearly fifteen miles is quite a good age. Done well to get him to a nice good age. Sounds like he's uh, been well looked after. What um, breed is he? Or is he a mixed breed? This feels really weird to uh, mold my chronic zone because it feels very strange in consistency. Okay, it's weird the way it moves. It doesn't quite feel the same as pigments. Like it feels almost like melted chocolate. It feels a bit, not, it's hard to describe, a little bit stringy in a way. Like it feels a bit more mucusy. <laughs> that's a, it's not a pleasant way to describe, but it's kind of that kind of thickness, that melted chocolate, um, mucusy kind of texture. <laughs> kind of, and it's not too liquid. I say he's a mixed breed. I thought he was a boxer, um, slash Daffy. We did the TNA test for a couple of years back, and he's mostly dog to Bordeaux. <laughs> I think in the future, once we get a house, I think we're going to get a cockapoo, I think, is, a, is the breed we're going to be aiming for. We need something that's going to be low maintenance, friendly, something that's hypoallergenic, hypo my words right, hypoallergenic would be a plus, and something that gets on with cats. So we have quite a, um, quite a, um, requirement. <laughs> But I think it would be good for my other half, like, my other half has never had, like, my other half's had pets, but never a pet that loves you back. Like, the pets that my other half's had are things like Daegu's or ducks. No, never like a dog or a dog. My other half doesn't like cats, so it will never be a cat, but... <laughs> but because there's no, there's no pet that loves, like, that, that goes out the way to love you back like a cat or a dog does. My other half sees pets as just animals and not like fa fa family members, which isn't really right. Like once you have a pet that loves you back the way that cats and dogs do, it's just different. It just hits differently. Uh, I was wanting to help me make some easy batches. I set him on mica. He mixed up and said, he, I, think that's, I think that's done. Need to cover every particle with binder. He looks down at the stab. I can see they're all coated. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't take much mulling, does it? I would say it takes a bit of mulling just to be 
on the safe side to make sure it is all done nicely. But because it's so fine, the powder is so fine, it pretty much does do it from the from mixing it. But yeah, money it would help helps break down any lumps that formed because it's such a fine powder. Um, it can get a bit lumpy, so it's always good to mull it. But yeah, this has got to be like the easiest thing to mull or make paint with. <laughs> probably following micro, probably say, um, like an earth uh, colour like ochre or burnt sienna, and then like an ultramarine blue or ultramarine violet does pretty well, and ultramarine pink, they all do really well. But yeah, I tend to mold my micas maybe for about 20 minutes, half an hour-ish. And I usually find they're done after that. Because there's no like pigment to break down, it's just making sure that there's no lumps. And all the powder is coated with binder. It's pretty straightforward, but a few of them seem to stink much faster in binder when stored. Yeah, they can do. I guess it depends on what it's made of, like the mic is made of. Where do you normally get your microphone? I'm sure you probably told me before. Mine all come from the Sopri, and I've been pretty happy with um with them so far. Like all their micas I've tried are really nice micas. Like they all seem to have like a really good pigment to them. Well, colour is probably the better word. Because they're not pigment, are they? But they all have a really good colour. Like the blue that I tried, the orange that I tried, all gave really nice colouring. The green, the red, the white, the gold. And the silver was fine as well. The favourite ones I would probably say that I've used are the gold, which is this one. And the Arctic white powder. And my favourite ones from them. The silver's fine, but it does look a bit steely I am going to be buying more powders from them I'm going to buy a pink one soon because I want to do a really cool one that will be Valentine's Day themed at some point Uh, so Saturday is knitting at the same time, I'm trying to finish my cardigan. I'm close to the neck right now, so I only have a hood left to finish. Well, that's good. I am going to learn to make next year a jumper, or sweater, as they call it in America. But first, I'm still got to finish off sock again. I've got three and a half socks to do, and only three weeks left to do them. <laughs> so it's definitely going to be a race against time. One of them I should be able to finish off today. So I have to then start tomorrow a new sock and get that finished in a week. <laughs> and then do another two socks after that. Oh, on top of everything else. So um, it's gonna be pretty hectic. <laughs> I've got a few from nail places, four crazier ones. But a lot of yours come from Musu. Because they're larger pots and not super expensive. I've not heard of them. I'm going to have to Google it. Musu. Let's have a look. Um, Musu Mica. Let's have a look. Is it from Colour Drive? Oh, I found their Instagram. No, that's not the same thing. No, it's not coming up. Is it on Colour Drive? No. Can't seem to find it. Um, you're in awe of knitters. <laughs> if it's enough for something you've never really tried, it is a really nice hobby. I do really enjoy it. It's nice to knit something that you can wear afterwards. Oh, you might have spied it wrong. Um, is it something I can find on Google if I search like mica powders? Mica powders UK, I'm guessing. 
So there is UK. I think the soap are on Instagram, not Instagram, um, eBay and Amazon. I think you can buy them from. I'm sure, I bought them from there. I definitely get them from eBay. Arteza. I put mica powder on Amazon. Ah, Musso. There we go. I found one of them. It's kind of at the top. As a white bottle for 50 grams, it's white. How much is that? When it decides to load. 7 99 Yeah. Well, that's quite pricey. I mean, I think the bottles are a better idea than the plastic baggies. I think the soap is a little bit cheaper. Not by much, mind. Or is it around the same price? It might be around the same price. Can't remember. Uh, you try better from who tries to have with such a mouse that you can't follow along. I sometimes I had that when I first started. Like I went to, I tried it on Ev's Discord. God, that was such a long time ago. It was like three years ago. Yeah, probably like three years ago. And there were people giving advice. And it was, they were giving like really advanced advice on what they, I was doing and. It went over my head. I can't remember who I learnt from on YouTube, but it was a really good good person. They were really slow and really explained it quite well. And they used really chunky yarn so you could see what they were doing. I know it's really difficult. Sometimes you can watch somebody and they go too fast or they're using too fine a yarn. One person I can recommend on Instagram off the top of my head is somebody called Sheep and Stitch. She's really good. I find her videos really, really helpful. But I'll see if I can find that other one that I've learned to knit from. If I Google how to knit, it should come up. To knit. It's not Sheep and Stitch. Sure, it wasn't a sheep and stitch. I think it might have been this person. I don't know. Definitely wasn't sheep and stitch, but she's really good. I want to say it was called, that she was called Happy Berry Knitting. Let me play the video for a minute. And I should be able to guess from the video. Stupid ads. Yes, yeah, so it was this person. So if you search Happy Berry Knitting, it's literally one of like the top 10 videos that come up when you search how to knit on YouTube. And that's the first one that I watched. Failing that, Davina from Sheep and Stitch is really good. And I can really recommend Davina. She's really good. Um, I have more yarn coming soon, so my next project is scarf and socks. Ooh. Yeah, I've also got a scarf on the go, but I've had to shelve it while I um do all these socks. <laughs> But yeah, the scarf that I'm doing is a cable scarf. So I wanted to try some cables. I still don't really fully understand cables and how they work, but I'm just following the pattern and it seems to be working. <laughs> but no, I think next thing I've got to do is finish my scarf after these socks. I've got a sock pattern that I want to do my set for myself. I've got the scarf to do. I've got a crochet Pikachu that I want to do. And then I want to learn how to knit a sweater. Um, left hand and right hand are good solo. We'll do the same thing. So I can play three woodwind instruments, but I can only do one hand for the other piano. 
or the other for the piano. I don't know. Well, there are diff there there are different methods of knitting as well. There's um most common ones are English knitting, or continental knitting. I prefer English, but I can continental knit. It's really helpful to learn both because, well, eventually to learn both. Because when it comes to knitting with more than one color, which they call ferrule knitting, it's really helpful to know both because you can. English knit with one hand and then fair, and then continental knit with the other. So it makes it a bit quicker. Crochet seemed a good fit, but I couldn't get that right either. Crochet is I I found crochet really difficult when I first started getting the tension right. Because you you kind of have to get the tension as you would when you um knit continental. And because I obviously learned to knit English first, and that's what I'm really comfortable in. I found it really awkward to start with to do crochet. However, once I managed to learn how to crochet, I was able to continental knit. So it had benefits to learning crochet. I mean, I'm not a master knitter. I'm not super experienced or super knowledgeable in it, but I know enough that I can follow some patterns and I can actually knit. I mean, I can make socks, so the next step is going to be a sweater after that. I think I'm going to start easy, though. I'm going to make a small sweater, just so I can know, learn the mechanics of it and how it all fits together. And then I will start looking at doing... Um, once I know how, once I'm comfortable knitting a small sweater, I will knit one for myself. <laughs> be brave. Uh, English, is that the one where you throw the yarn? Yeah. So it's one where you insert the needle, use your right hand, wrap the yarn around the top of the needle, and then pull through and turn off. It's one where you do the work with the um, right hand. I think this colour's nearly done. Which I think it might actually be done. Let's paint it bit out, see what it looks like. That was really nice tea. I do like making tea lattes. Lattes even. Oh, it looks a bit blue. I think I've still got some of that blue powder in it. Let's give it a proper, proper rinse. Let's try that now, it might be a bit better. That looks better. It doesn't look so green. Still looks a bit off colour, but... <laughs> I'm happy with how it paints, it feels nice. So I'm gonna go grab a jar and then we'll tub it up, I think is the aim. When my mother stops making a room for him, stay.
Right. So we've got a jar ready. And that's made a run for it. I can just see it now on stream on the delay. Slowly making a bit of a freedom. The other thing I like about micas is they don't stain. Like some paints stain, so if you get it on yourself or your fingers, you can end up with coloured fingers for a few days. It also means micas are a bit easy to clean up. Like with pigments, some pigments I have to be really careful with like cleaning up so I don't make a big mess with it. But micas don't tend to have that issue. Jar of liquid gold. <laughs> They're super clean. I scraped pretty much all of it off the board. Oh, made a mess of the jar. Oh no, I, I think I've just lost, lost the lid. So that's the first colour done. Right, I'm going to clean up and then we're going to make a second colour. Up. So I'll be back in just a moment.
nice, no stains. <laughs> I only put this vinyl cover on at this desk last week, and already there's stains on it. So, <laughs> just shows you some pigments are really staining. And back. Make sure everything is all nicely lined up. Oh, image. There we go. I have a roll of vinyl cover waiting. My desk has a huge stain, green stain from Elite Wall Sleep. Oh no. Yeah, this isn't the best final that you can get on the desk. It's just a nice cheap IKEA desk and I've covered it. Um, I probably will be getting a new like tabletop for the desk because I'm quite happy with it. And the actual tabletop itself isn't too expensive. So I think I will be getting a, a new one at some point in the future. But yeah, this desk had lots of holes in it, bits of damage from where I got too much water on the desk. So now that I thought I'd try and preserve a bit longer and put vinyl on it. I wouldn't probably use this vinyl in my kitchen. <laughs> there is a Patreon post coming soonish um, about it. So yeah, if you wanted to have a bit more of a closer look. <laughs> I'm not going to use too much of this. Actually, I might do. I feel this is gonna. This is definitely one of those colors that takes quite a lot of paint blazer. It's also a really horrible color to melt. Oh, hey CJ, how are things? Good morning to you in Texas. Oh, 
Oh, so you're planning to send your desk down before you put your vinyl on. That's a good idea. I couldn't do it on this one because it's not real wood. It's like um, this desk made of like um, MDF, I think. Really good, strong MDF, but like it's really thick. But obviously I don't want to sand it because it will damage it even more. So I just covered it in vinyl. There are still a couple of bumps and bits on the desk, but it will do. It's an upgrade to what my old desk was, which was a kitchen table. Yeah, this colour is Prussian blue. That's going to need more paint binder. So we just did gold mica, which is in this pot here. And this one is going to be Prussian blue. Sam, did you get a chance in the end to look at the or play with the pigments you found in the hardware store. I know you mentioned it a while ago that you found some pigments that you were gonna make paint from. And this is a really horrible cut to melt. <laughs> if anybody is thinking of mulling Prussian blue, I wouldn't recommend it as a first color. No, actually, it's not too bad. <laughs> there are a lot. Of, there are a lot of worse colours than this to make, but it's definitely one that requires quite a bit of paint binder and some mulling. It's a bit like um, in Danfro and Blue PB60 as well. That can be also a bit um, of a tough one. This is very bright blue. I'm sure this is definitely Prussian blue. Don't tell me we've made it fade over blue instead. Let's try a bit on a bit of paper. I'm convinced this is Prussian. Yeah, it looks like it's because it's really dark. I don't know, that could be phthalo blue. I reckon I've made phthalo blue. I mean, that looks like phthalo blue. Crap. So where did my Prussian blue go then? So this is phthalo blue, not Prussian blue. I think. Crap, never mind. <laughs> One extra color. Where did my Prussian blue go then? Because I would have put it into a jar. That is definitely phthalo, isn't it? That's not. So when I painted it out here, it looked almost Prussian. I did think this was a bit smooth to. Damn it. So now I'm not sure, I'm going to have to do some digging to see if I can find my Prussian blue after the stream. 
this I'm really bad at doing this. I'm bad at doing it with um my paper and I store it in jars like this, I'm not labelling it. I'm gonna start labelling things now a bit better. So we've got phalo blue. It's just it's really strange because it looks really dark as well, doesn't it? But yeah, I think this is definitely a phalo blue. I did think as I started mulling that this was a bit too smooth. Normally Prussian blue is pretty um, gritty. <laughs> oh, I've just put my hand in that. Not going well. Yeah, normally Prussian blue is um, yeah, look at that, that's very electric blue now. If I scrape that away, that's definitely not um, Prussian blue. Damn it. I want a Prussian blue. Just gonna go wash this blue off my hand because it's gonna make even more mess if I don't wash it. Sorted. <laughs> <laughs> you feel like you're getting stains from just looking at it. Yeah, it's quite a staining colour, isn't it? All right, so we've got an accidental paint in the mix for um, the next paint sale. Good to know. I was going to make a Prussian blue. Not this Prussian blue, I was going to make PB16 Prussian blue. But um, seeing as we've got this one, we'll have to go with it. So I'm going to leave that jar of pigment out and I'm going to label it phalo blue. <laughs> I do like a good phalo blue though. It's definitely a colour that I really like. The one I have on my palette is the PB16 version, so it's a bit more greener than what it is. Red, red, blue. That's because I've got a in damp from blue on my palette too, so that the red, blue, and damp from blue will kind of deal with anything reddish that I want. I wonder if like um, a phalo blue or an indamp print blue is what they use to stain jeans. Because it's a very jeans kind of colour, isn't it? Like, like phalo blue and indamp print blue. I feel phalo blue is a very underrated colour. A lot of people use it, and I think a lot of people overlook it sometimes when buying Fake Little Blue.
Yeah, I really like the boots too. I think they're my favourite colour and watercolours to use. Well, to buy any and collect. There's so many different ones you can get in watercolour. And they can all look different and behave differently depending on if they're granulating or not. Yeah, they're very good for mixing. I think traditionally people used Prussian blue for this kind of blue, but Prussian blue is not light fast, so it's normally better to use a phthalo blue. If you mix phthalo blue with ultramarine blue, you can actually get quite close to a Prussian blue hue. So it's definitely good to have um, Prussian blue, um, not Prussian blue, phthalo blue on your palette. <laughs> Sometimes looking at this now, like it does look kind of Prussian blue. Like this bit here, this is quite a deep dark blue. Can't believe it's this phalo. It's because I was rushing. What's your favourite blue? I see like cerulean blue, like sky blue. Yeah, cerulean is a really nice colour. You can get some really nice ones out there. Though I do prefer the PB35 ceruleans over the PB36 ones or the PR28 ceruleans. It's got to be genuine cerulean blue. <laughs> Yeah, this definitely feels like a phalo. It's got that kind of syrupy consistency to it, which is quite normal for phalo blues. 
Oh, hey, Tom, how are things? So Tom likes Prussian blue. It's surprisingly easy to mow. Is it? I find it quite difficult to mow. Like it's a bit um, gritty, like it never goes quite smooth. Yes, it needs more money and time than other colours. I used to really like Prussian blue, and I used to have it on my palette instead of um, phthalo or um, damp room blue. But when I found out that it wasn't light fast, and I tested my version of it, not my handmade version of phthalo blue and um, Prussian blue even, but the one that I was using from Rembrandt, it faded in sunlight. So I scrapped using it. I actually find it's really weird, Prussian Blue's like fast, this is really odd. Because it will fade quite quickly in sunlight. But then you leave it another couple more months and the colour will kind of bounce back a little bit. A little bit and it will get, go a bit more blue. So it will recover a little bit. But it will still be, it will still, even when it recovers, it's still more faded than what it is freshly painted. So I just decided not to use it. I prefer to use like fast pigments from my artwork in case they ever end up being sold, which will probably be never because nobody wants to buy my artwork. I think it missed my clothes and the carpet. <laughs> mm. My carpet's pretty damaged at the minute anyway, thanks to um, large spillage that happened the other week. <laughs> Tip for people with pets, don't let pets in your art studio. <laughs> it never ends well. <laughs> This has been really easy to mow, which is really um, surprising. I'm sure from memory, Phthalo Blue was always a bit more difficult, but it seems to be all right. It seems to be pretty nice and smooth. Look at that nice sapphire blue coming through. How can you not like that colour? <laughs> I see on my website that's not for manganese. Oh, yeah, I think it's sold out. I can't remember. I've not looked at my stock on my website for a long time. I've not really had time to look. I probably should because I think I probably got some stock on there that is sold out that I need to remove from being viewed. Oh, I'm, I'm glad you like my art. Thank you. Well, next year I'm really trying to focus on my art next year and hopefully trying to sell some commissions and get myself out there a bit more as an artist rather than just as a paint maker. 
Um, I recently made a nice deep turquoise colour by mixing equal parts Prussian blue, Mars black and Hansa yellow deep. I also found that if I add a part of Hansa yellow to the mix, it becomes a sap green colour. Oh, that's interesting. I didn't know that. I think Schmincke make a paint called Schmincke's Paints Grey. And that's mixed with, um, I want to say it's mixed with black, um, Indian red or English red and ultramarine blue and that makes a really nice neutral black And yellow deep. What pigment is that one? Yeah. I have a feeling it's quite a. Is it PY seventy something? Hansa yellow is applied to a lot of different um, pigment and color names. Like I know Hansa yellow being as PY three, and I think Hansa yellow deep is usually like PY ninety seven or something like that. Some people label PY83 as Hansa Yellow Deep. Let's paint a bit of this out. Another phthalo blue, not Prussian blue. So irritating. I mean, I've now got to make Prussian blue at some point. <laughs> Oops. It's diluting pretty well. PY65, there you go, thank you. I don't know if I've got that colour in my collection. Either from a commercial brand or from pigment. It's one of those things I've got so many pigments now and make so much pain that I have lost all memory of any pigments I have. Whilst it may be PY83 or PY65. So that's what the phthalo blue looks like. So it's a very nice phthalo. <laughs> I do like this phthalo. I think this one's from Cornelison's. And then there's gold next to it that I made before. I really like the color PY83. I've just made that one recently. I have going on sale next year. I really like PY83, it's a nice substitute for PY153. So if you liked PY153 and you're sad you can't get it anymore, PY83 is a really good substitute. Does this need a tiny bit more paint binder, I think? I feel like it might do. It feels a little bit too syrupy. I'm not gonna put too much, just a little bit.
I think this paint's nearly done. It's already really smooth and really, it just feels nice. Which I'm surprised, I thought it would take a bit longer, since it's a phthalo blue, but I guess not. I think I've only made this one once, once before. I go over this for another five minutes or so, and then we'll pan some up and pour the rest into the jar. Um, one interesting pick that you've got in your collection is PG-10. Um, I've got that colour too. I think there's different versions of it. Um, so it's known as Azo Green, I believe. Um, it's discontinued or extinct colour. You have less than one gram of it. And it looks like PY129. Yeah, it does a little bit. I've got a dispersion somewhere. Where is it? I know I've got it somewhere. can't seem to find my pigments today, but it's a dispersion that I got from Guerrero Pigments in the US. Someone was kind enough to send it to me. Are you looking forward to your um, pyrography, pyrography, Cyan? I'm really disappointed that I'm going to miss it. I'm going to have to watch it on catch up after when I get home later. So that looks like it's going to be a really fun stream. Oh, wow, that's amazing. So it's going to be a gift. That's really cool. I'm definitely going to watch that later. Paragraphy is one of those, again, that I'd love to get into, but I just don't have the time. <laughs> I'm 
I really like what Val does. Um, so if anyone that doesn't know, Val Connell is a pyrography artist who does a lot of pyrography on wood and watercolour paper. And I really like what she does when she mixes the two together. So like she'll do an image and burn it on a piece of paper and then add watercolours on top. I seen her do um, the Manatee one, it was a couple of years ago. She did pyrography on watercolour paper of a manatee. And then she went over it with watercolours and it looked so good. dirty tray ready and we can start whoops that's a paintbrush putting some of the pans out ready I just hope my socks gonna be ready in time for Christmas that's what I'm panicking about most at the moment <laughs> I was actually supposed to be doing an extra pair of socks as well for my other half but um I'm definitely not gonna have time to do that so far I've done my brother and my sister's socks and I'm halfway through my mum's ones. I had a problem with her socks because I was going to do her a fair oil pattern but the yarn I used wasn't very nice and it didn't quite go to plan. I spent like a month on it and I got halfway through the sock and it wasn't working so I had to give up and start a new pair with different yarn. I really want to try burning and water cutting combination. Yeah, I think you should. I think you'd be really good at it. You'd have to choose some good watercolour paper though, I think. I'm not sure if it would make a difference how it behaves. Like it might be different on, say, cotton paper to study those paper. I think she might have used arch paper when she did it. I don't know if using a thicker weight would help as well. Instead of just using the 300 GSM weight, maybe using like a 600 might help. I think I'd also struggle with pyrography. Like I feel like um, it's a bit like kind of pencil. You really have to be patient with it. I think I'd go in with a bit too strong and burn it all. Because burning things are fun. <laughs> I think a lot of people don't have, don't realize that with pyrography you go in really slow and on a really low a lower temperature than what you think like it shouldn't be smoking and burning as much as what you think <laughs> that's why i think pyrography for me would be really dangerous because i think everybody knows i'm really really clumsy so the amount of times i would burn myself i mean it would be really dangerous I mean, I am used to burns because I used to work in catering in kitchens, so I'm pretty used to burning myself. So I won't be in too much pain. I don't want to too, use up too many pans, I've still got quite a lot of paint to make. I 
Oh, thanks, Sam. Do you sometimes get that on videos? Like, sometimes I have a really random spam on videos, like comments. I went through a phase, I think it stopped now. I think a lot of people did. Went through a phase of somebody promoting some weird video thing. Like, somebody would say, oh, like, there'll be like a random spam comment saying, Oh, well, you can watch something like this on this video streaming service. And then somebody else will reply to the comment saying, Oh, yes, I've heard that too. I've heard it's a really good service. Like spamming. I've also been getting on Instagram lots of people spamming comments of, to try and get people, like promoting pages. Like, oh, promote this on so-and-so. I got one person saying, oh, message me. I want to talk to you about something. And they looked really genuine. I thought, oh, what do they, they want? And they're like, oh, promote so-and-so on this. And it's like, block, delete. that colour done. Um, where's the lid gone? I think I've got the lid in the kitchen. Let me go grab it. Actually, while I'm going, I might as well dump this in the sink. Um, is really so, really so. Also tends to spend a lot of time in the ugly state. Oh no. I think all artwork has that ugly state. I didn't realise Pyrophys was such a long one. <laughs> I suppose, yeah, if you go over it too much, you can probably burn it if it gets too hot. So I guess it is quite slow. Um, but so, Sandy's new palette for oh, how many paints she collected. <laughs> yeah, I've got a lot of palettes filled with handmade paint. Way too many. <laughs> I've got like three palettes, and I'm about to start a fourth soon of my handmade paints. <laughs> spam. Oh, Rooker gets a lot of spam on hers. No! On his channel, on his Instagram. I just got blue paint on my top. Damn it, that's what I was trying not to do. Oh well, I need to change my top anyway. Probably best. <laughs> Hopefully it has stainless steel sinks. Oh me, yeah, it's stainless steel. <laughs> right, while we're here, I might do the other ones, the Aztec red pants. I feel like I'm going to be ordering more half pans soon. I've gone through so many. I can't quite believe how many half pans I go through. How many have we got? Let's, let's do 10 because I feel this is going to be a real popular colour. The Aztec red. Where is my little spatula? There, on the window. 
can do. So let's start off with the red. Give it a stir. Come on, don't tell me you're going to be too thick. It's a nice thick paint. I am trying to get it on one side of the half pan, but um, I'm kind of fading with that a little bit. A bit more. Yeah, let's go with that and then we'll do the gold. And I've actually labelled the top of this one. <laughs> so I need to remember to label these. And then we'll go into the gold. And this guy is a bit more liquid because he's just been made. They will thicken up when you leave them to sit in jars. Because they sort of absorb the like the pigment will absorb more of the paint binder as you leave it to sit. Which is why the fresh paint sometimes looks a bit runny in my stream because it will thicken in the jars. Oops, I'm making a bit of mess with this. This is one that I don't really mind making too much of a mess with. Micas tend to be really easy to clean, but they don't make much mess. They don't stain or anything, so they're really easy to clean off. That's what I mean with um, my cook can be a bit stringy. Oh, thanks for stopping by, CJ. Enjoy your the rest of your Sunday. Whoops. Right, so that's all the pans done with red and gold. I'm going to be doing the same with Prussian blue as well. So blue and gold. That's what makes Aztec um, blue. When I can find said tool, there it is. You can use a toothpick for this, but I'm using something called an out an oil tool, a dot a w a w l. It's used for book making or book binding. And I'm just gonna go in and stir it. Spoil the red and the gold. Uh, 
I'm not doing it any particular way, I'm just swirling it, making sure there's a nice mix. Make sure there's some nice stripes going on. Whoops, got some paint on my thumb. It does look like there's quite a lot of gold in the pans, but it does kind of need to be that way. Like pigment is very pigmented because it's pigment. Mica's not a pigment, so it does behave a bit differently. In order to get a good colour mica coming through, you do need to have a lot of mica. Whereas the red will give a lot stronger colour off than what you think. Let's get to the corner with the make sure there's no empty holes in the corners. Yeah, I think I'm happy with that. I will do many layers like this so that they're all they've all got the red and gold marbled for each one. Bin, where's my bin? There it is. So I'm going to quickly lay work those jars because I know I'll forget if I don't do it. Do I have some stick paper somewhere to make some labels? Yes, I do. There we go. So let's do the Prussian blue label first because I will forget otherwise. Not Prussian blue, it's phalo blue. I don't even know how to spell phalo, I think it's with, I think it's H-T-H. I do have a label maker, but I can't bother to find it. And then what, two on these, so gold mica. And then the other one, phalo blue again. I missed out the T and the TH. Never mind. I know it's phalo blue. Looking at that, even if it's spelled wrong. There we go. <laughs> I'm glad you like the swirls. <laughs> they do look good sometimes. I didn't think they'd do as well as what they've been doing. Like I made some a while ago. I can't remember what colour it was. I think it was last year. I've got blue paint on me. I know it was last year I made some. Um, I think it was for Christmas. I didn't know how they, well they'd do. And everybody loved it. And then I did another one with gold and... Prussian blue and that sold out very quickly <laughs> and then I did another one for the Wiltshire set and that sold pretty well as well so I think people like the um, swirled pans I think we'll take a we'll take a random guess that people might like the uh, pans I never label anything like I just try and remember but where I've got so much paint now that I make um, I've forgotten <laughs> what's in what. Do you label things in Finnish or do you label it in English? Or the language that it comes in, maybe. I'm going to put it on the lid. It's not probably best to put it on the lid because if the lid gets switched or misplaced, it will um won't make sense. But I kind of need to put it on the lid because I store my jars in a drawer and I can only see the tops of the lids, not the sides. In order to look at the sides, I have to pull each jar out, and that would just take too long. And I'm not doing that. So <laughs> on the top it goes. Apart from this one, this one will go on the side because it's pigment. Uh, reusing an old Yankee candle jar. See, reusing things. <laughs> it's good to reuse things. 
And then on this one, phthalo blue. Especially because I've also got a jar of indanthrone blue somewhere. I definitely do not want to get the two mixed up. So we now know that's that one, and my red one is labelled as well, so that's fine. And then they can go into my drawers. Some of them are really obvious, like I probably wouldn't need to label this one. It's very obviously um, gold mica, but <laughs> some of them are not so obvious. I've got a couple of um, uh, green earth colours I had. I'm trying to make a different shape between each one. <laughs> There's also I've got I've also got magenta and a PV19 on the go, and I can't tell which is which because they both look identical when you paint them out. <laughs> so that's also not good. So you label and finish. Good to know. I'm trying to learn German at the moment. I go through phases of learning languages. Like I'll learn, I'll go on Duolingo for like a couple of weeks, and then I'll lose interest, and then not go back on it for a couple of months. But I'm really going to try really hard to learn German. Yeah, the, that's pretty much it for today's stream, I think. I think we're pretty much done. Um, yeah. So I think next week I might try and get an illustration up and ready to go to um, do some painting. I've got a lot of illustrating to do. I've got how many drawings on the go? I've got two drawings on the go. And I want to do another one on digitally. Maybe I could do digital drawing next week with my new um, my new graphics tablet that arrived in the week. So maybe next week is a drawing thing. I don't know if I can, can I record and stream at the same time. I think I can. Yeah, it lets me record and stream at the same time. Yeah, that's good. So yeah, perhaps next stream we'll do some drawing, um, digitally drawing on my graphics tablet. I'll set it up to do some. So that'd be interesting. I've never really drawn much before on camera because when I use um, traditional pencil and paper, I don't press hard enough, so it's really difficult for you to see. And I'm a really awkward sketcher, so it's not always ideal. <laughs> but yeah, we'll do that next stream. We'll do some sketching. A nice, easy one, a nice sketch one. it for today i hope you guys watch enjoy watching me paint even though it was the wrong colors that we made <laughs> still next year there'll be an extra color going on sale that shouldn't be <laughs> so yes we made prussian blue not prussian blue phalo blue and we made gold mica <laughs> but yeah we'll look at the drawing tablet all next week i will i'll show it on camera first so everyone can have a good look at it and i'll switch over to screen recording and we'll open up gimp and we'll do some drawing on gimp does that sound good? But yeah, that's what we'll do next week. You can see me doing some really awkward sketching. I'll still have the microphone up and going and that, so you'll be able to see me, like hear me. <laughs> but that's what we'll do. Something for the first time on stream. <laughs> but yeah, I'll see you all next Sunday, same time, so 2 p.m. English time, 3 p.m. Berlin, Fran um, Paris and Amsterdam time, I think. Um, Helsinki time I think it's 4pm and if you're in Toronto or New York it will be 9am yeah thanks for everybody who stopped by today and good luck today Siam with your stream make sure everybody goes checks out Siam's stream who is streaming in about an hour's time over on her YouTube channel doing some pyrography and I'll try and catch that later so thanks everyone um, take care and I'll see you all next week bye